Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I figured we would go over the memory locations window in Pro Tools. So to open up the memory locations window, you can either go command and then five on the numeric keypad and that'll open up the window or you can go to window and select memory locations from the option in the drop down. So once you're in the memory locations window, you have this drop down here on the top right. It's this little arrow here or triangle, whatever you want to call it. And there are a bunch of options in here and some of them are pretty basic, right? So it's stuff like how to create a new memory location, uh, edit or clear memory locations, delete all, stuff like that. Um, but some of them are a little more specific to this window, to this exact uh, section of Pro Tools here. So we have sort by time. So you'll notice that these memory locations that I have here are not in order. So it's not one, two, three, four, five. And that's because I have checked off here sort by time. So it's by whichever one comes first in our timeline. So if I uncheck that, it'll sort by the numerical value. And that numerical value, that's usually going to be in the order that you created the markers or the memory locations. And you can change that, but that, that's usually what the default is. So I just have sort by time checked off because I like to know what order they appear in the session. But it's up to you. And we also have some fun options in here like export markers as text, right? So there are a few interesting options in here to explore. And let me just zoom in here to show you. But basically, if we're in this window here and we click on a marker, our view here is going to be centered around whatever the marker is that we clicked or whatever the memory location is, right? It doesn't have to be a marker. So as I jump around here, you'll see that these markers are changing because it's jumping to whichever one I just clicked on. And then also if it's something like a selection, it'll jump to that selection with whatever you saved within that, that memory location when you saved it. So the other thing that you might have noticed here is along the top part here, it's kind of like the X axis, right? But along the top here, we have a bunch of options. So each of these means something different, right? So when we're looking at a given memory location or a marker, markers are just a type of memory location, right? Basically you can go across here and see if there's a dot in each of these categories, it tells you something about that memory location, right? So this first one tells us whether or not it's a marker. The second one here tells us whether or not it's a selection memory location. So for example, this one's my bounce selection. So you'll notice this whole film gets highlighted when I click on it because it's an actual selection memory location. If you choose to have the zoom settings for a memory location saved within that memory location, it will be, have a dot here in this column. So for example, if I zoom in here, and then I click on my bounce selection, it returns to the zoom setting for that selection, for that memory location. So this fourth column here tells us whether or not we have pre and post roll settings memorized within that memory location. This is a show and hide option here. This next one here is a track height icon. So you can kind of see the little arrows here at the top and the bottom. So if you have track height options or track height settings that are saved within the memory location, then it will have a dot here for that memory location. And this one here is active groups. So if you want to save active groups within that memory location, then there will be a dot here as well. And then this last one here is a window configuration. So if you want to save details about the window configuration within your memory location, then there will be a dot there as well. And so all these settings are really the settings that when we go and we hit enter on the numeric keypad to create a new memory location, these are all options that we see here within that dialog. So it should be pretty familiar to you if you're familiar with making memory locations. But yeah, so because we have all these categories for our memory locations, categories of things that can be saved within our memory location, they actually operate as filters too. So if you click here on any of these options here, you can display or you can hide different memory locations that have that parameter. So that's one easy way to navigate around, especially if you have a whole bunch of memory locations. I don't have a whole bunch of memory locations for this session because this is actually um, an old film that I was working on a while back and then they made some changes. So it, picture lock basically got unpicture locked. And um, so now I, this is me trying to get restarted or like get back into this film. So I don't really have a ton of memory locations here yet, but um, if you have a whole bunch of them, this can be really great for that just displaying and hiding different parameters here. And again, that's just by clicking, right? So you can click here on the different parameters to do that. You can also click on the drop down here and go view filter and you can do the same thing right here. So that's just another way to do that. Another fun thing that's within this drop down here is we have a main counter and a sub counter just like we have up here. Um, in our edit window. So you can show and hide the main and the sub counter and you can change what unit of measurement they're in. 
So you can look at really specific details here for where the actual memory locations are within your session. So that's pretty handy too. Another thing that I tend to just leave on all the time, but it's another good option that you can control here is the default to marker option. So you can have this checked off or you can have it not checked off. And so when it's checked off, basically when you go to create a new memory location, the default will be to make a marker. So I will hit enter on the numeric keypad and my default is always a marker. And so since I make more markers than anything else, that's just how my workflow is, I like to leave that on so that it's always defaulted to marker. But if you have that unchecked, then for example, if I were to make a selection and hit enter and then go to make another memory location, it would be whatever the last option was that I chose. It wouldn't be marker by default. But since I have that option activated, when I hit enter again, it always returns to marker as my option. So I like that because what I'll do a lot of times, especially while I'm tracking or doing something where time is kind of of the essence, is I will just hit enter on the numeric keypad twice, and that'll create a marker for me. And so that way I don't really need to navigate through that dialog, that memory locations dialog. I just hit enter twice, and I know it's going to make a marker. And then I can go rename it later or change it if I want, but it's there now. You know, that's the point. So yeah, that's the basics of the memory locations window. I hope this helps some of you guys. I know I've gone over creating markers in other videos, so I'll see if I can find a video that covers that or some of that at least and put a card up on the screen for you guys in case you want to learn more about making markers and working with markers. So yeah, as usual, if you like this video, please hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell if you wanna be notified when I come out with a new video. And you know, one of the best things you guys can do if you wanna help support my channel is to just watch more of my videos. So if you find these helpful, please go check out another one of my videos and let me know what you think. And if you wanna support my channel more directly, I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash Noise. And my Patreon patrons do get access to additional content there on Patreon. And I do try to upload new stuff for them pretty often. So thank you, Patreon patrons. You guys really make this possible. Thank you so much. So yeah, that's it. I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you for watching. Okay.